The name of the show is The Way to Go. My name is Alan Bendich. I'm going to be your host. Tonight's guest is Max Bendich. How are Hello, I? Dad. How are you, my son? Trying to get back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, this was a birthday week, right? That's right. It was Kara's birthday, your granddaughter, Kara. Right. Your and birthday. My birthday. I turned 60 on Wednesday, right? Wow. Can you believe your youngest is 60 <laughs> years old? And actually, today, July 17th, that we're shooting this, mm -hmm was uh, Rose and Norman Liss's anniversary, my, my wife's parents. So, uh, uh, July, July is our day? Yeah, July is our month. Yeah, I'm right. not <laughs> picture <that. laughs> It's okay. Better, better. So, uh, but you know, Aaron was in town for, uh, for the birthdays. Mm -hmm. We went out to eat, and he mentioned that he had, he's gone on Ancestry.com. Yes. And, he, and basically what he's doing is looking backwards. And he had some questions, really, and maybe we could answer some of them on, on the air. You know, uh, like you, you're... Your parents, your yes. father, had how many brothers and sisters, do you know? He had Sam, Molly, he had one. Was Sally, no, who is Sally? Uh, Sally is my niece. Oh, okay. Sam, uh, Sam is the, father, the brother. Right. Jaime. 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 And uh, uh, no. Sarah, yeah. Sarah was a sister. Now I have another question. I mean, because he found someone on Ancestry.com that was, they had, in quotes, related, but we have no idea who that was. And actually, the name of all things was Usher, but maybe it was Asher. Was there a, any, no, anyone like I, that? I, as far as I know, that's, I never heard that name before. Right. But it's interesting. You know, uh, Aaron was able to get a discount, I guess, because he's a student. But he's like checking out the entire family and going back in both moms and your side of the family. And it's, uh, it's really interesting. That's good. Look. I actually had an interesting family. Absolutely. Alan, it's from, you know, what do I remember? I remember from about, when I was about five or six years old. But until I was five or six years old, we must have been, just imagine, three kids right. in, two, in, in, in three years, in, in, in two years. Right. In two years, I was born in 1915. And they and uh, my two brother, brothers were born. And they were in 1970. I, but the th like the, you had relatives in Ellenville, right? Yes. Now I remember you. Uh, they had was there were two sons. It was Max? There was another. Was Max the Stalker yes, or whatever that, you call them? No. Oh, who was he? Yeah. Uh, uh, Sam. Uh, uh, was it mom? That, that that sister. Yeah. Had two sons. That, l l your father's sister. Yes. Louis' sister. Louis' sister. Right. Louis' sister. Right. And was it Molly? They, they or was it Molly? Who was no. who Molly was? Gross? Right. Molly was the young uh, was my father's sister. Right. And uh, was she the one in Ellenville? Molly? No. Uh, Sarah. Uh, Sarah. Right. And uh, frankly, I forget the name. Uh, okay. No lie. But their son, their kids. One of them was Max. No, Sam. Who was Max? There was a guy that was Max, and it was called Max. The Sh and they always talked about him being a really strong. Oh no, Max. no, no, Max and Grace. Right, the Grace. No, uh, a little, I'm in the army. Right. And Mama's there when she came over to visit me in in, right. in the old show, and about in Saint Louis, we have a cousin, they and his wife, Max. The, 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 he was a violin player, but he, he, they called me Max the Smaller, right. and he was Max the Big. But I thought the violin player was his brother, because we found, an, we found two people. There was Max and his brother. No. Okay. No, so no. The, the, okay. the mandolin player, or the... Uh, the, the violin. Uh, no. Uh, uh, Molly. There was a violin player that played in Ellenville. The son. One of the sons was a musician. No, that... Uh, no. Yet. Okay. So then I forgot. Okay. Certain things I forget, you know. I anyway, but it's interesting. But we're going back, and it's, the one thing about Ancestry.com is that you could get public records, and you find out who was married, when they were married, and all this stuff. So it's interesting just going back, talking about mom's family. And Aaron's really interested, you know, and uh, it's, it's yeah. been an interesting trip. And again, you have to, you have to be lucky, Alan. Right. I, when I was born and I'm growing up, First of all, we lived on 136th Street, right. and, but I was a hustler. How it happened, I don't know. I, may, I, I was working about, about seven years old. And they, they were, uh, first of all, one block from us was a big market, a street from 
what I call Brook Avenue to St. Anne's, that whole street. In the South uh, Bronx. On the South Bronx. And if, if, you, if you were a hustler, you would get $2 or $3 a, a, a For, day. At what? I would be helping selling, I remember selling bananas. Right. And I was like, I actually, I was, put them, I was told, I was putting them into the pay, uh, uh, customer's lap almost right. to make sure that they buy. In other words, uh, he, got, he, he got good... Uh, uh, customer service. With me, with me over there. I was, right. again, he I made was, money. I was just to make money. Right. Why? And believe it or not, you give it to me, I, whatever I do, give it to my, my parents. Right. And, but the most important thing was a little later on, I didn't, we never talked about this. My friend had an uncle or something who made Jerris for the, for the hair. It was for the hair tonic, right? Was it a hair tonic or, right? a a hair tonic or a, uh, what is Jerris? I know, I've heard of Jerris. Jerris. But, okay. No. So, I get, I get a job there and I'm working. And uh, I don't remember, I, I, I was getting about the, the normal price uh, and I'm, I'm a hustler. And he saw that I was doing things. I saved him time for this. I saved him time. And he decided that he's going to give me... He, and he had six or eight, I'm not sure, Italian immigrants. And they were working. And every now and then he was trying to explain. And but look, I, he, he hired me. And how I, inter, I listened to them and they listened to me. And we got to know You were able other. to communicate with and each other. We communicated, Alan. Right. We communicated. And all of a sudden, I look at my paycheck, I got a $5 raise. Right. Well, and that's when $5 was a lot five, of money. Five, Alan, $5 was a lot of money. Right. And, and this is probably okay. what, in the 20s? Or the 30s? 20s, probably in the 20s. In the 20s. Right. I was, 1920s. I, I was still going to, first of all, I, I was still going to. The, uh, maybe public school or just the beginning of high school. So maybe it was the beginning of the 30s, because you were born in 1915. Yeah. You might have been 16 years old or something like that, right? And here I'm working, and I, they, they sell Jerris for the hair. Right. They sell, at that time, if you took a, uh, a shave, the barber would put something around your neck, and it was some sort of paper. And I found out, just by luck, I found out that he was... Uh, uh, Using too much of this and too much of that, and was saving him money. Right. Alan, in a short time, five dollar raise again. You know, and I think you know I, we hear a knocking. I think that's the pizza, by the way. But that's a, that's another story. <laughs> I <don't, laughs> so I think someone should check out the pizza. About that later. Right. Okay, but tell uh, me more about Jerris. About who? Jerris. No, Jerris again. Jerris. Uh, oh. Mm -hmm. I thought, uh, in those years, I said I was born at the right time. Right. On every. Of the block right. was a barber shop. Right. On every the same thing with a laundry. Right. On every other block was a laundry. Well, that's before they had washing machines and all that. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, you right. had right. now the laundry, meaning if the person could, even there was my, my father or I, if we couldn't get a job, right. we couldn't you know the, it was a rough time to get jobs. So by luck, if they saved some money. They would open a laundry, right. and, and they, were, they just make a living for themselves. And I, uh, but uh, we helped each other. Right. And Alan, in our house, again, because I was that type of a hustler, I, uh, we made mo a little more money than the other people, right. and every, everything went, went along okay. And uh, then we... Uh, so what happened? Year, did, what, when you left, so why did you leave that place? Was it because of just no, school? No, why did I leave that place? Yeah. The, soon we heard that we're going to, oh, first of all, I'm getting a little older, and I'm right. getting a little older, and we knew some girls. Okay. We knew that we were six fellas okay. and six girls, and we liked each other. We really liked it. What's not but, to like? And that, but Alan, we were good friends, and... At that time, not only at that time, all of a sudden, a new fellow comes into the gang, and he's going with one of the girls. Now, these girls are our age. Right. So these were about 18 or 17 years old, and, I, and we decided we, uh, they're, they're, they're thinking of getting married. Right, too young. No, You're that, too young to do that. We were, uh, uh, 
we couldn't do it. Right. But we never talked about it. We used to go to Coney Island. We used to go, uh, it was a, a, good, a good friendship. Right. And then another fellow came in, and then we knew we were finished. Now comes one of the luckies by, by luck. So we go looking for a, a club because I'm a, I, Alan, I, I was know. a good dancer. I'm right. still a good, I'm still know, a dancer, I know. Alan. I know. So, and we, we find a club right near where we are now, where we are in, uh, in uh, Kitay House, Burnside Avenue, 7 West Burnside Avenue. Lofts, and the club room was about this big, uh, how would you describe this room? I w this room, I would say, I don't know, it's about uh, well, 20 uh, by, uh, it's, uh, I would say it's about 400 square feet. All right, whatever it is, we'd get a room like this, but you have to have furniture. Right. Where did we get furniture? In the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Not only us, yeah. there are about 10 different uh, uh, clubs like ours, right. really nice guys. I mean, we were all nice. We weren't uh, one against the other. Right. Right? When girls would come in, right. they were coming to our place, two dancers, go to the next place. Right. So sometimes they stay there and they meet people. And, right. and uh, so Alan, one day, uh, two girls come in. Oh, what a, uh, I like classical music right. and I like folk, uh, music. folk music. Right. Alan, that folk music boy. And, my two brothers did it also a little bit loud because of me. They liked it also. And the, the girls would come in about Friday night or Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. That's the only time. And many times we forget about Friday, we think about Saturday and Sunday. And we're listening, and I bring records. I have a records, I have a record player, and we brought that in. Oh, I want to tell you about how did we furnish it? See these clouds? After a while, people throw them out. Right. Now, and we almost we fight, you know, from, let's say you are on from uh, uh, one room and I'm in another room and right. we see the same piece. And, but we, everyone, everyone had at least one or two uh, chairs. There was always a couch, right. always a couch, and record player. Right. The record player was my, uh, my record player. Right. Why? Because Alan and I had records. I had records, Yiddish records, and I had uh, folk, records. Uh, folk records. Folk records. Folk, no dance. And classical, right? Huh? And you had classical music also? Classical. No, n n I didn't have any, any uh, dance uh, music? Uh, you know. Uh, like popular music. Popular music. Right. Good. Everything fine. One day we're listening to something called Ballad for Americans. Right, by Paul Robeson. With, with Paul Robeson. Right. And we're singing. And all of a sudden, I take a look, and two girls, and this was before, about 6.30, we, uh, they usually come around early, right. and 7 o'clock, everything starts over. And Everybody this is did, the late 1930s. And the late, and uh, what happened? Uh, they start hollering at me, get those records off, because look, the girls are coming in, and the <laughs> girls actually said, after those two girls, please, tell them, we want to hear this, this is nice. Now, so they heard the uh, music. Right. They heard the music, and then they left. It's all right. Then little by little, it got later, and they took off the uh, classical music, and they put on popular music, and the girls came back again. Right. And Alan, luck. That's, that was the whole thing. They come back again, and I'm dancing and, and dancing, and after two dances, I was like, they left, right. and they left. Sometimes you never see them again. Right. Sometimes they come again. They came. About a two week, they came again. I, I took with the small one. My friend took a little, a little taller. He said taller than me. And my friend said, after those two dances, she, you never danced with another girl. I know, I've heard that and story. It's a I great story. It, well, it's a nice story. It's, it, it's a nice story. Right. I met your mother that way. Right. And, uh, How it happened, I, again, luck. Yeah, You know, the, I have like, um, memories. I have memories of you and mom working like dogs in the store, okay? I mean, like, you, right. had, you had a laundry store. But I also remember, like, when we'd have, go to either, like, a wedding or some sort of a family gathering or if we were, went to the Catskills or we went 
to Lakeland, mm -hmm. and there'd be music playing. Mom's still coming up to you and dancing with this big smile mm -hmm. on your, her face, even when she was, you know, when, well, when she was younger than me, but still in her 40s and 50s, and, uh, but, but and still the happiest person see, in the world dancing. Again, this kind of conversation, I love. Yeah. I get memories. Like you said, the Catskill. Now let me tell you, Alan, about you. We got, uh, in my neighborhood, in, in our neighborhood, what's the Bronx, uh, where, where did you go? Bronx House. Bronx, okay. It's called Bronx House. Bronx House, House right, which was, a, which was a community center. A, commu a, a big community, a large community. And they had community. music lessons, they had and clubs, they had, they had all this kind of stuff. And they also had a pool. And camps and a pool. They had, well, they didn't they, have they, a pool. They, they got the pool later. All right, all right, no. But, but they had a gymnasium. They, 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 and right. little, uh, and, and you went to Bronx House right. to learn uh, piano. piano. Right. And then we got a call. You are a, get, you're a pretty good player. And they were, they recommended that we buy a piano. Right. And Alan, if I ever thought, told you again, uh, a $300 piano, $300, you could, you could live a year. <laughs> right, $300, but that was back in 1960. So I that's a long that. time ago. That's 50. Right. I said, no, no, it, it, it wasn't. It, right. and, I'm sorry, 1965. No, it whatever was, it, was, it, it was 50 and, years and ago. And Alan, right. we saved that. Uh, 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 we, we, we paid it off. And right. it, but this is what I want to tell you about the Catskills. Yeah. I got a picture of you. Well, it's not the Catskills. No, that no, was I'm Lakeland. sorry. That's Lakeland. Right. You're right. One moment before we went, before we went to the Catskills, right. we went to Lakeland. Lakeland is about 60 miles from New York. That's and a, and a, a beautiful lake called Sylvan Lake. Right. And uh, the, we went to one other place again on Lakeland. Right. And. Uh, and uh, Every week, uh, uh, and, and, right. and in the evening, they would have music and lectures and things like that. Right. And who was it? And to get seats? And they also had a talent show. Huh? They also had like a talent show once a summer. Well, I don't remember. That was the whole thing. It was a talent show. I know, show. you were part of it. Right. And we have you playing the piano right. in the picture. Your feet cannot reach the floor. <laughs> cannot <laughs> reach the floor. And, and you were... You were you, you you put on a pretty a pretty good show. Yeah. Again, and 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 who must have? And I'm sure I don't remember that. Bubby and Zadie, my mother. My parents. Father, my grandparents were there. Everybody was there. Every, every the whole family. The whole family was. It was there. wonderful. We had again. And we also learned how to see if you really want to talk about Lakeland. Lakeland was an unbelievably beautiful, wonderful place. It was, it was a socially conscious place. It was a place where, where uh, all were welcome. The first. Um, interracial marriage I've ever seen were, was back in the early 60s at Lakeland. Um, there was, you know, it was, oh, it was the most diverse so, group of people and most politically progressive people. And, and, and Alan, why, who, who were the folk singers that came there? Pete Seeger, Pete Paul Robeson. Seeger. I don't know about Paul. No, Paul Robeson, Robeson came to Kinderland. I, there's pictures of him. All right. Again, I don't remember. I may, a, or maybe I do remember. Right. But those are the kind of people that I have the, uh, the records, right. and, um, and, I'm, and I was happy. Happy, right. it was a good time to live at Allen right. at, at that time. And you know, and, and, and they had like loudspeakers where Phil Oaks's music and, and, would be over and, the and, air. And, 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 uh, but something else, yeah. there was a war going on in Europe, and we knew little by little we were going to be into it or something. But When you were a kid. What? When you were a kid. Yes, right. I'm talking about when I was a kid. Right. I mean, that, that, that's what the... And little, and by luck, <clears throat> I got, they gave out uh, draft cards, and we got numbers, and it took a, a, a long time for us to get, I, I, oh, I, have my, I had two twin, I had a twin brothers. One of them, Aaron, Aaron was one of the greatest chemists in the, in the Biochemists. The, the biochemists in the world. Right. He was a, they would send them to, at the, that time it was the Soviet Union, right. and, or to... Uh, yeah, he did a, a lot of, he did a lot of DNA research yeah, and cancer uh, research, and every, all kinds of and, research. And he's on, again, he's on the YouTube, you, you can read these things. Yeah, it's on Google, you could Google his stuff, all his work he worked on. He was, he was, he worked on DNA before DNA was called no, DNA. No, that, <laughs> no really. I know, I, I, I've seen the, no, no, I have uh, all the documents. Uh, I used to so, print them for you. And mm -hmm. Alan, what happened? At, 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 with, with those times, mm -hmm. we got a little older, and we, the girls 
and left us, and we we, uh, we had to go to go to to get someone else. Right. And in my family, I was the only one. Yes. Who was called up to for the army? Now wait, I was ma Alan. I was married November twentieth. Right. Right. Nineteen forty-one. Which was three oh, days. Excuse me. Nineteen forty-one. Yeah. Number. Why November twentieth? Uh, Mom's mom, birthday. Mom wanted to be November uh, to be twenty-one, and her birthday was November seventeenth. November seventeenth. So three days later, you so got married. We got married, right. and then three weeks later, some present Hirohito gave us. Right, the but, Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. Uh, but again, December seventh. Again, but Alan. Yes, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, Alan. I know. Things have happened to me, Alan. When I speak to, oh, I'm in. Now I'm in Kate House, right? And uh, again, you must know that it's a family. What? Uh, it's a it's, an, it's a independent living community. And, uh, and mm -hmm. mom and I, uh, uh, we oh, we had a private house. Right. Mom never wanted to. Tell me, I'm sorry, I was living most of my life here. I'm gonna die here. Right. All right. And you, or David, your brother, and Miriam, your sister, dad. You don't have to shovel snow. You don't have to do this. Go to these places. I mean, never. I never thought I would go to right. a place like that. But when we finally went, yeah. Mom loved it. Right. Why? Because she she was a she was a good reader. Right. Mac, get me. A, oh, we had a wonderful library. I know. You talk about have, it. You've talked about still, it. We still am living Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Mac, get me a book. <laughs> I find a book and I said, give it a. After a while, Mac, what a story. Man, we all want you to read it. All right, I've just finished it. Get me another book. Right. Well, that's a kind of life. And also, she didn't have to do anything. I mean, all she had to do was live. Right. You know, when, when you're at, you could, and you exercise. But I mean, basically what Ma, all mom had to do, was she was, taking, she was being taken care of for the yeah. first time in her life. I mean, yeah. other than when you took care of her. But that's a separate issue that we talked about many times. Many. But, Basically, I mean, but then you didn't have to really do anything anymore either. I mean, That's so. right. Oh, I was, I was even earlier than that. I right. mean, I, it's because of what happened to me and right. everything else. Previous, if you want to know what it is, previous uh, right. uh, episodes. episodes. Right. And <laughs> yeah. How many times have we talked about I'll, it? I'll, but, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's still interesting. You know, you get together. Each year we have these family outings. We had one last week at a cousin Adrian's house to celebrate your 100th year again, you know, and just looking at pictures. And the other thing is, when I look at my nephew, Michael, and I realize that he's, uh, he's 44 years old, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I look at, there's pictures of me when I hitchhiked cross country and I met Jordan. Mm -hmm. And he was just a kid, maybe about, you know, 10 years old. And now he's like, you know, he's a uh, superintendent of schools in New, in New Jersey. He's a grown He's already you know, a middle-aged man, and he's like, you know, I met him when he was just a little boy. It's just it's this whole time thing, you know? So it's just, that's uh, what I say. Alan, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. We lived at the time we should have lived. If we ever lived now, now I think, and don't worry, I think of this now. Remember, there was never a war. Right. Finally, I was born in 1915. There was a war going on in Europe. Right. In 1917, we, we, we went into that war, and then it was over. And then the next time, before you knew it, it was worse. And it was called the War to End All Wars. Right. World War II came along. Right. And from that moment on, Alan, we, uh, right, right. eight years, another war, seven years, another war. We've been in uh, war in the yeah, uh, Middle East, no, and Afghanistan. I, I, so yeah, no, I mean, no really. North Korea, they right. were there. And General MacArthur said, the heck with everything, go into North Korea. Right. No, and uh, Truman fired him. Right. Actually, no, uh, but I'm wondering, you, and you're a knowledgeable fellow and uh -oh. you know all the, uh -oh. who, uh, <laughs> is he, uh, are you happy with your, the, 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 the generations? In the, well, my generation that, was uh, unbelievable. I right. mean, except, I mean, we had, the biggest change, the anti-war movement, the no, civil right, rights no. movement. Meaning, wait, meaning, the war, uh, the world that we gave you. Right. Right. How is it going to be the world that you give your children? Well, I think. 
I talked to Aaron and Kara, mostly Aaron about it, because Aaron is, you know. I know Aaron. He's an interesting person, my son Aaron. And, you know, I mean, now, you know, the education about, you know, uh, basically acceptance of all people, you know, and which is something that no matter how liberal everyone was in our day and the civil rights movements that we belong to, now we're getting in, into broader understanding of people, you know, concerning with like things like gender and more and, and a truly internationalistic approach, which is what Aaron's involved in, yeah. you know, because no matter how liberal people were, they weren't quite as uh, aware of people's s specific individualities. Maybe there were more, you know, the group individualities they were fighting for, for like basically civil rights for African Americans or whatever, you know? But rather than now they're looking, it seems like it's becoming much more of an individualistic fight where we're looking at every individual, you know, who they are, you know, whether it's a gender issue, whether it's a political issue, it's become, I think, instead of becoming more like a international thing, it's becoming much more so, egocentric. So today, you know? we yes. left you, we haven't left you yet. Yes. This world. Right. How long did it take, I mean, for uh, 50 years or? What's the uh, question? No, 50 years from now, do you ever think about anything about, uh, uh, you know, I think, we'll, well, I don't know, we'll see what happens. I mean, that's Aaron's world and Kara's world, you know, and then they're gonna have the same issues with their kids. You know, no matter how liberal we thought we were, constantly I'm being told by Aaron, you know, like, really, you have to open up your eyes a little bit wider. Like, I mean, you obviously opened up your wi eyes wider than your parents. Yes. To a certain extent, maybe we did in our generation as well, you know. But now, like, I mean, it's just, just acceptance, the golden rule. I mean, like, Caitlyn Jenner was just on TV, you know, uh, talking about, like, basically, like, just be nice to people, you know. I mean, that's, that, the, that's basically what it's all about, accept people for who they are. Right. The idea of being nice to people, Alan, I think... It's a foreign idea to America. I right. mean, no, no, really. It's a, maybe it's a doggy dog. Right. And maybe uh, the idea they'd rather hold you down right. than give you uh, to help you go up a little. That's my idea. I, no, I, I agree with you. And it's a, you know, and again, that one percent, the people who are the billionaires. <laughs> believe me, they're the people that you know. They're controlling everything. You know, they yeah. control everything, and uh, you know. It's, a, it's an interesting, it's interesting that people are aware of it, but what can you do about it? You know? I mean, and if I, 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 I don't know, can we do anything? We try, Alan, I live, I'm glad about it. We don't stop trying. Right, but the other thing is, you can, you can ignore it, and, but it's still there. You know, just because you ignore it, or you're not thinking about it, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And know? when I speak to the people in Kitay House, right. and that's, that's interesting. And I compare myself, and how, how, how it happens, I don't know. They don't like this, they don't do this. The parents think she never knew what to do. No one, can, oh, no, but it's a shame. They, they bring him into a place like that. The, the, they, the children right. bring the parents to a place to be taken care of, good. Right. They, hardly anyone comes to visit them often. Right. They are there. Well, you're fortunate because at least with David and Mimi, they're constantly visiting you. So I no. do sometimes. No, I don't care. No. But I know at least one thing you know. I'd visit you at least two and maybe three times a month. <laughs> but there is one thing I have to tell you, Dan, and it's, it's really sad because uh, there's only th one thing left to say. That's a wrap. Good night, folks. Mm -hmm.